nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 40 in our series nerddice.com, where we build a tabletop role-playing management application using Ruby on Rails 7. And um, we have, and we referenced this in two videos ago when we updated to Ruby 3.2.1 and Rails 7.0.4.3 um, that um, Devise has released a version that is um, that resolves the compatibility issues with uh, Rails 7 and Turbo and uh, everything. So uh, we're going to, in this video, uh, try to unwind the hacks that we put in place back in uh, earlier in this application to um, get Devise and uh, Turbo and everything working together. Uh, it's important to note here that we've got a robust set of browser-driven um, uh, system tests so that we can be fairly confident uh, in terms of the changes that we're making that if something breaks, that we'll be able to figure out where it's breaking and be able to fix it. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we went through the trouble of creating system tests for all of these because uh, we wanted to make sure, in particular, the uh, integration with Turbo, something could, like at a request response level, um, say that it's passing when in reality your browser doesn't actually do what you want it to do. So uh, take a look at this issue here. Uh, so Devise has had a pull request where they uh, result, kind of closed a bunch of issues related to this. And then they also created a wiki page for how to upgrade your device version to work with Turbo. So uh, I'm also going to take a look at, in our code base, the particular commit where, uh, where I uh, fixed device to work with Turbo. And the, the failure on that build was due to code coverage um, decreasing. We went back and increased it in the, um, in the next video. So um, that wasn't a build like your tests are failing build. It was a build your code coverage decreased. So uh, in our application, we had this kind of tech deck tech debt hack uh, with the De turbo device controller here. Uh, the one thing we want to make sure about, and it's not in this particular commit, but if we go and look here, and I think this is a, um, an error in the uh, kind of the other people who had solved this problem, who I kind of uh, gave credit to that they didn't test the, uh, cancel my account scenario. But if we go to app controllers and turbo device controller, uh, we can see we've got kind of all this responder stuff um, dealing with a custom responder and all that. Uh, so we should be able to, those are the um, better programming and go rails uh, who, whom we relied on for the original solution. So to remedy this, the first thing we're going to do, uh, we're gonna take a look at our gem file. And I just did a bundle update like 45 minutes ago in real time, uh, two videos ago. And so we want to here devise instead of 4.8.1, we wanna make this 4.9.0. Update and responders got updated. We, uh, when we did the bundle update earlier, we specifically tied, kind of held that back at 3.0.1 because some of our uh, system tests were failing with 3.1. 
Uh, so if we do a git diff now, we've got devise. Oh, and we lost our debug items there. We need to bring those back. I'm just going to hit quit here. We're going to um, get reset hard head, get status. We'll check out a branch here. a feature branch. Eh. Yeah, we'll just call it, it's not a really a new feature, it's upgrade buys. And decommission the hacks. So instead of messing up our uh, debug gem, we're going to just do a bundle update device here. Uh, go back to our gem file. Make this 4.9.0 again. And just update device. Responders. Make sure that our dependencies didn't disappear here. All right, so debug stays the same when we do that. Uh, we'll have to continue watching that um, debug dependency quirk there um, as we continue on in our project until either a, I don't know whether the problem's in bundler or in the debug gem or in where this is, but um, it's kind of weird. Anyway, so we've got that done. Now, I think we can just do a straight up git remove of our turbo device controller here. So git rm control app controllers turbo device controller. And now we want to take a look at our config initializers. File, device.rb, and so we have this whole tech debt section that we can get rid of. what else we did here. So the parent controller will go back to just having this as a commented out item here. So that's gone. navigational formats we'll reevaluate that in a moment and then we'll restore the uh, warden and failure app stuff around line 311 or so see whether there was a I'm using device inside of an engine yeah there was a line break after that okay so now I think we're back to 
parody. But we need to take a look at the the how-to here and make sure that we add these lines in. section here add that in take a take a brief look at what else we need to do Registers Turbo Stream. I did not rely on it to be a non navigational format. And then our views, we already updated to work with Turbo. So now let's run our test suite and see what, if anything, is broken. pause and let the suite run here. All right, so we had only one failure here. So let's see if we can investigate this. I'll get the screenshot up here. So in our repository, you can take a look at temp screenshots and this is our error here it says invalid email or password in the flash message i think before this was failing at an html level let's take a look at this um this scenario here so this is line 20 seven of login and logout test. If the email is blank, login with credentials blank, something need to sign in or sign up before continuing. Did I, is it a case sensitivity issue? Let's take a look at our screenshot again. Invalid email or password. So that's a different message there. Let's and run it in the app and see what happens here. So we'll launch our dev server here. Oh, we cannot launch our dev server here. I haven't closed and reopened my terminal since setting, um, since installing Ruby 3.2.1 and setting it as my default in the previous video. So we'll go now to our localhost 3000 and the particular issue we have here is provides error message if email is blank. So log in with credentials, blank with password something. So I'm going to log in.
invalid email or password. That seems okay. Yeah, I'm not. That seems a little bit more. more than once let's create a an instance variable here both refer to the invalid login attempt message. And we'll rerun that specific class to see if it's performing consistently and reliably. I'll pause and run this a few times and then run the full suite again. Um, and then we'll see if there's any, um, see what the results are. All right, so I reran the class a couple times and I uh, reran the full suite. Everything is successful here. So I think get status, gut status. That shadow, he'd slit his mama's throat for a nickel. Uh, the Ted Wilson translation. Um, the new pixel remaster, it's like he'd sell out his best, betray his best friend for the right price or something like that. It doesn't quite have the same ring to it, but apparently it's more accurate to the Japanese. Anyway, let's take a look at our git diff here. So we upgraded device. Our gem file dot lock contains only device related changes, which is what we want. Uh, in our device initializer, we got rid of our tech debt code, added in our uh, responder config. reverted our changes to the, the commented out code that existed before. Uh, and then we um, refactored this out um, because it's being used more than once now. Uh, this is the one kind of behavior change that in how device works, at least when you're in paranoid mode, uh, invalid email or password uh, seems to be seems to rule the day, even if you have a blank email provided, which I'm fine with. And that's it. Uh, let's check RuboCop. Make sure we didn't get into any new trouble with the authorities. We did not. I will add that RuboCop capybara to our backlog as something to take a look at. So explore that. We'll probably put it under security policy there. Um, so now I think we're in good shape here. We can Git add git status our deleted files still in the um, staging area and then we will git commit and sign it.
pause and write my message. All right, I've got my commit message here. I will close it. Let's make sure that I got rid of all the, the tech cadet blocks here. So I've got a working tree here. Looks like still have all right. So that I think we'll just do that. Status. Now I think we can push to our branch. All right, so while that is building, we will create a pull request into main, assign it to myself. All right, I'll pause and let the build complete. All right, our build has completed and passed. So hop into the command line here. Check out main, merge the branch, push, which will close and merge the pull request and then get branch, delete our temporary branch. Pull request is merged. The issue is resolved. And our backlog is mostly fresh, we uh, can maybe take a look at a couple of these other ones uh, while we're working on the user experience and market research interviews. Uh, I probably will, the next video will probably actually be the, um, the interview template that I'll, uh, I'll have out there, add to the wiki. Um, let's there. All right. Um, so that resolves that and we will see you in the next video. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. 
Until next time, keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.